Alright, so we're going to get right into the guts of calculus today and look at calculating derivatives using first principles. It's a really tedious process, but it is very mathematically rigorous, and it's going to lead to being able to show what derivatives are, um, and then we can start using some shortcuts a little bit later. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start with just some definitions here. So our first definition is a secant. It's simply a line which connects two points. Typically on a curve, could be a circle, uh, doesn't need to necessarily be a function, but it's a line connecting two points. What's really important is that the gradient of a secant is the average rate of change. So I was referring to that as the A-rock. So secant, its gradient is the average rate of change. Now, the smaller the interval between the two points, the closer we can get to estimating the rate of change at a particular moment in time. So what the rate of change is exactly at a point versus between two points. So that's what we're aiming to get at, because that's essentially going to lead to the derivative. So let's just write out that the instantaneous rate of change, or the IROC, is the rate of change at a particular point. Okay, so remember that's the change at how the cha y is changing compared to the x, but it's at a particular point. Now we have a different tool to find the instantaneous rate of change and that's called a tangent. And a tangent is a line which touches the curve at exactly one point. So at a single point, it's touching the curve. Let's have a look at some animations. So here I've got my nice basic quadratic x squared. Okay? And I've defined a value h, where h is the x value distance between these two points. Okay, so this point is at 2, 4. Looking here, it says that point's 2, 4 and that one's at 636, that difference there is 4. Now as I slide this over, it's going to move my line. Okay? And we're, what we're looking at is this gradient here. Okay? So as my two points get closer and closer and closer together, we're approaching a tangent compared to a secant. As they get even, even closer, as close as possible to 0, Notice my gradient is getting closer and closer and closer to 4. It's almost there. Now as soon as it gets to 0, the line's going to disappear because it's trying to put a line through a single point and it panics a little bit. But appearing back on the other side, we can see that the gradient exactly at 2 is 4. Okay, So this is looking at a secant, checking out the average rate of change, whereas exactly at that point 2, that would be an instantaneous rate of change. So my secant is approaching a tangent as this value h goes towards zero. Okay, so moving on from the definitions, we remember that the gradient of the tangent, well, that's the instantaneous rate of change, and that's what we're going to do a lot of as we get into the calculus unit, so talking about tangents of curves in terms of the instantaneous rate of change. So how exactly can I figure out, so I did it graphically to figure out that it got close to 4 for that particular value, but how in general can I do that? Okay, so because we want to find the instantaneous rate of change, okay, so the instantaneous rate of change at a particular point x, what we're going to do, well, we're actually going to start with the a rock between x and x plus h. Okay, but here's the kicker, where h is a very small value. Okay, so that's what's important. H is very small, so that's the really important part. So the points we're going to be looking at are at x and x plus h. So the full points are x, f of x, and x plus h, f of x plus h for some function x. And really important where h is getting very, very, very small, because we want those points to get as close together as possible so that it is instantaneous. So I plug that into my formula for average rate of change. Okay. So I've got my change in y over my change in x. Okay, so there's my change in y. First y value minus the second, and this is my first x value minus the second. Now you might notice we can actually simplify this denominator. Well, x minus x, that's just simply h. Okay, so the average rate of change, we're looking at this formula here. Ideally, we want h to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So. We're at this point, we've got that the average rate of change can be determined from this formula, that was what we were looking at yesterday, but we want h to be very, very small. In particular, we actually pretty much want it to go to zero. 
So we introduce this concept of a limit. Okay. Now a limit is basically the behavior of a function as it tends towards a particular value. Okay. So for example, um, 2h, as h goes to 0, well 2h would also go to 0, because h is going to 0 and multiplying has that factor. So that's what we're going to be looking at. It's almost like substitution, but there are a lot more subtleties to it. We'll have a look at those later though. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that average rate of change, but we're going to take the limit as h goes to 0. At this point, essentially plugging in h for 0. But the reason we say it's approaching is because if I look at my denominator here, it's h. I can't actually set h to 0, because that would lead to breaking math. Okay, I can't set a denominator to 0. So we just say it gets very, very, very infinitely close, but it never will actually get there, kind of like an asymptote. So my final little piece, I take this limit. So write this down exactly as it's written here. So the instantaneous rate of change is the limit as h tends to 0. So we write that the h tends to 0 goes under the word, little letters lim, and then we write out the actual function that we're taking the limit of. So essentially we're going to plug in for f and set h to 0. Okay, so let's get into this good stuff of derivatives, which is what calculus is all about. Okay, so essentially what we're aiming to accomplish here, we want to create an equation that determines the instantaneous rate of change at any point. Okay, so basically I want to be able to plug in x equals 2, x equals 7, x equals 1, and be able to get what the instantaneous rate of change is at that point. That function is going to be called the derivative. So what a derivative is, it's a function that represents the gradient of the original function. A little bit of notation. The derivative of f is written like this. We say it in two ways. The Australian way, which I will probably forget, f dashed x, or Canadian way, and I apologize when I slip back into it, f prime of x. Make sure you don't write a negative 1, that's very, very different, that's the inverse, this is the derivative. It's kind of like an apostrophe. So f prime of x, or f dash x. That's what the derivative is. Okay, so what this derivative will be, we'll be able to again substitute in any value for x within the restrictions of the function and figure out the gradient at that point. So that's what the derivative is all about. So we're creating a function that allows us to plug in to get the gradient. Okay, so again, pause if you want to jot down those details. Otherwise, let's have a look at the formula. Here it is. Big red bubble, because it's super important. f dashed x, and that's how we say that, is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h, meaning I plug x plus h into my function, minus the original function, all over h. Again, once we actually get into doing some examples, we'll see how things cancel out, and we do get a function in terms of x, which allows us to do that substitution. This fancy formula in the big red bubble, textbook will refer to it as the difference quotient equation, because there's a difference, we're subtracting, and there's a quotient, we're dividing, hence the name or I'll typically refer to it as first principles. Okay, so that's, this is where derivatives come from. As I said, I'll show you a shortcut next time, but this is, this is the mathematically rigorous definition of a derivative. Okay, so really important, it gives us the equation for the gradient at any point. It's a really powerful tool. Okay, so pause here, that's the theory of it. I'm going to make a separate video um, that gets into some examples so that we can put this into practice. They are a little bit tedious, um, so I will break those up into separate videos. So again, this is the theory component of calculating derivatives. It's a little bit theoretical, it might seem a little bit crazy at the moment. Once we get into examples, hopefully we'll feel a little bit better.